let me talk Amit Khan versus Devin Alexander. I view this as a genuine 50-50 fight. It's a really tough one to call and one I've been struggling with. I see this as a real, real hard, big test for Amir Khan. But for anyone who thinks otherwise, I'm not the kind of guy who goes, uh, you know nothing about boxing. What I would say is, anyone who thinks this is going to be an easy night for Khan should redo their research on Devin Alexander. There's a lot to like about Devin Alexander. And I think it's potential to be a very, very tough fight with Amir Khan. Let me start by talking a bit about Devin Alexander because I guess he's the lesser known of the two fighters. Devin Alexander, 26 wins, 2 losses. He's not the biggest puncher in the world, I'll admit that. The obvious way to beat Amir Khan is to knock him out by landing on his chin. Devin Alexander, to my eye, doesn't hit as hard as a Danny Garcia. Obviously, this is still a relatively new weight for Khan at £147. And Devin Alexander can hit a bit. So there's always scope for Alexander to win by knockout. But I think it is fair to say that Khan isn't in with the most devastating puncher in the division. Especially if we consider that, you know, there's guys in the welterweight division who really, really can whack. So as I say, Alexander, 26 wins, 14 of those by knockout. He's a hurtful puncher. He can punish you. He can get you out of there. But he probably doesn't belong in the category of brutal one-punch knockout artists. The two losses is something I want to talk about in a bit more detail. The guys he's lost to, Sean Porter and Timothy Bradley. Now people forget in the Porter fight that the judges actually scored that relatively competitively. One of the judges had it 1-1-3, 1-1-5 and the other two 1-1-2, 1-1-6. So yes, Porter won. It was a unanimous decision. I have no complaints about that. But it was a, you know, even the judges had it close. The other fight was against Timothy Bradley. Now, Bradley's quite a divisive character. I rate him very, very highly. He's on my pound for pound top 10 list. Just look at the one Manuel Marquez fight, where in my opinion he gives Marquez boxing lessons during certain rounds of that fight. Bradley is a serious, serious fighter. The point is that Devin Alexander has only lost to Tim Bradley and Sean Porter. They, in my opinion, represent a better standard of opponents than some of the guys who've inflicted defeats on Amir Khan. He's no walkover. To beat Devon Alexander, you have to be a top guy at 147. Let's not just talk about Devon Alexander's losses, though. Let's look at his wins. His last fight, he beat Soto Karras. Pretty much won every round, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, Soto Karras is no you know, world-class fighter, but he is a respectable yardstick. Earlier on in his career, he beat Lucas Matisse. And Marcus Maidana. Both of those are really, really highly rated top level guys. Let me talk briefly about the Marcus Maidana fight. So I think that's perhaps the most relevant. What you should know about that fight is two of the three judges scored every single round to Devin Alexander. 100 to 90 on two of the scorecards. The other judge scored it 9 1. To Devin Alexander. Those scorecards reflect the dominance of Devin Alexander in that fight. Now what's interesting is Marcus Maidana since then has reached new levels in his fights with Floyd Mayweather. Well, I'm not someone who thinks that Maidana beat Floyd. In the first fight I gave Maidana four rounds. In the second fight I gave Maidana two rounds. But let's be honest, he caused Floyd some questions. He took rounds of Floyd in both fights. We didn't see that when he fought Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander was so slick, so professional, the two of the three judges gave him every single round against a fighter like Marcus Maidana. Now, let's not get confused here. 
Definitely John is a top, top level welterweight. Definitely a top 10 level welterweight in my opinion. For me, if you're beating guys like Matisse, like Maidana, I appreciate that may have been at light welterweight. But if you're beating that calibre of fighter, if you've very recently been a world champion, it's hard not to see you a top 10 fighter. What Devin Alexander isn't is the most fan friendly fighter. He doesn't often get involved in electrically entertaining brawls. He's not a huge puncher. He's not an exquisite trash talker outside the wet ring. And I think in a division where you've got massive punchers like Keith Furman, characters like Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, Amir Khan and Kel Brook and Juan Manuel Marquez, it's easy to forget a guy like Devin Alexander. But just because Devin Alexander isn't a loudmouth, just because he isn't a knockout puncher, just because he doesn't get involved in brawls, that doesn't mean he's going to be easy to beat. I mean, if we compared performances of Devon against Marcus Maidana, compared to Amir against Marcus Maidana, Devon Alexander certainly was the more convincing of the two. So how did you beat Devon Alexander? In my eyes, the two guys who've beaten him, in uh, Porter and Bradley, basically outstrength him. The fights became inside fights. Bradley, who is a superb boxer, I mean, look at the Marquez fight if you have any questions about his boxing ability, didn't beat Devin Alexander by boxing, in my opinion. He beat him by roughing him up on the inside, by out, you know, I was going to say out physic physically, you know, outstrengthing him. He roughed him up on the inside, he outstrengthed him, he manhandled him. It's an inside fight. It wasn't the most attractive fight. Sean Porter was able to get the nod by similar tactics. Brawling with him on the inside, throwing him around, wrestling with him. You know, outstrengthening him, being the more physical of the two guys. In my opinion, neither of those guys beat Devin Alexander by a boxing game. It was more of an inside fighting game, a strength game, a wrestling type game. Now, Amir Khan doesn't really bring that to the table. I know Amir Khan does have a tendency to get dragged into a brawl. But he's not an inside fighter. He's not a wrestler. He's probably not the biggest welterweight out there. He's not someone like Sean Porter who's going to be able to physically outstrength and dominate a guy like Devin Alexander. Khan is best when he uses his range, when he fights long, when he combines his jab with his superb hand speed, his fast feet, his combination punching. Don't get me wrong, Amir Khan has got spectacular attributes. I've been a fan of his. Pretty much was every fight he's been in since the Olympics. And on his day, Khan is a superb, spectacular fighter. He's got, everyone knows about his hand speed. He's also got excellent foot speed. Excellent power. Excellent combination punching. However, what he doesn't bring to the table is the sort of brute force physical aggression and the inside game of a Sean Porter. And in my opinion, we've only ever seen Devin Alexander lose when he's been confronted with that type of attack. So to my eye, if I can is to beat Devin Alexander, he's going to have to beat him in a way that no opponent has ever beaten Devin Alexander before. I see this fight going to points. Alexander's a durable tough guy. He's never been knocked out. There is a potential for Alexander to knock Khan out because we know about Khan's chin. But I don't view Alexander as a huge, huge puncher, so I think the likelihood is this goes to points. Now, if Amir is to win this fight on points, he is going to have to use different tactics 
to Sean Porter and Timothy Bradley because I don't think that plays to his strengths. And he's going to have to fight a very, very smart fight. He's going to constantly have to be on his bike, using his reins, using his jab and moving. Fighting almost like an ambush fighter in my opinion. Devin Alexander is very slick, very well schooled, very clever, intelligent fighter, a lot of ring savvy. Alcon wants to avoid getting caught. He wants to avoid getting counterpunched. And I think the way he's going to do that is if he keeps his discipline, which is a big if we can't, because we've seen him get sucked into a war time and time again. Now, I was impressed by Khan's performance against Colazzo in his last fight, Luis Colazzo. I thought he did really, really well. But let's be honest, even in that fight there were moments of concern. There were times where Khan looked like he could get stopped. Even though it was a more disciplined performance, it wasn't disciplined enough. And I viewed Devin Alexander as a tough fight in Colazzo. My honest opinion is that this really could go either way. If I had to choose one, I would go with Amir Khan. And I would do that simply because of the attributes he brings to the table. If he fights like he fights against Glasso, there is scope for him to nip grounds against Alexander. He has got the better foot speed in my opinion. He has got the better hand speed. There's probably more sting in his jab. He's probably the more eye-catching fighter. But Devon is really, really solid. And just because I'm here, I've given him the edge. That doesn't mean Devon is lacking in footwork or in hand speed. Devon's got a nice jab. He's got nice hand speed. It's a really, really tough 50-50 fight. The reason that I've droned on about why I think it's so competitive is because I didn't like the stick comms getting for this fight. I thought, fair play to him for taking it. This is a real competitive hard fight call. Now, what he's got to do is be disciplined, use his attributes, not get sucked into a war, and expect the fight to go late. I'm 55-45 on Khan, but wouldn't be surprised at all if Devin Alexander was able to get the job done. Let me know your thoughts. I'm really looking forward to this one.